This episode of the podcast is supported by Audible. You can download and listen to the world's best storytelling. I use it all the time to and from work. You can listen to audiobooks, original series and more on their free app. To get your free 30-day subscription, which includes a free book, click on the link in our show notes and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I had an awesome guy called Dwayne Cooper come in to have a chat. He is a personal trainer and he is plant-based. So his diet is essentially vegetables, fruit, uh, and all that good stuff. And he also does a lot of fasting. So like water fasts, dry fasts. And for him, he's had like loads and loads of, of great health benefits from that. So we hear about his story, why he did it, how he's found it. Really, really interesting. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool, we're live. Dwayne, thanks for coming in. It's my pleasure. Perfect. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. So, did you find it all right? <laughs> it was very easy to find this place. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, it was smooth sailing. Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks, thanks to Google. So, so you met my mum in the park. I did. A random story. <laughs> I did, I did, of course. I had my daughter and yeah. she loves swings. Who doesn't love swings? <laughs> the life. I uh, wish lo- I was that age oh. I could just... Just take me to a swing, Daddy. I literally love swings. And I think she was with your daughter. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we started talking. Nice. And that's it. One thing led to another. She told me about not taking out my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I checked out your Instagram and you seem to love swinging on bars in the park. <laughs> yeah, actually, I do. So you're a personal trainer? I'm a that? personal trainer, nutritionist, water fasting advocate. Water fasting advocate? Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll have to dive into all of that okay. stuff. Okay. And you will say vegan? Plant-based. Plant-based. What's yeah. the difference? I feel like when it comes to vegan or you're put under the umbrella of veganism, right. which which means that you technically changed your diet or your lifestyle for the wealth, welfare and the well-being of animals over yourself. And plant-based is when you are more conscious about the type of foods that you put into your body in regards of benefiting your health first, which of course in turn benefits the well-being of animals and the environment. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so the veganism movement is more towards sustainability, saving the planet, cruelty to animals. animals. Like, yeah, cruelty to animals is first. Is that the key thing? Fine, fine. Everything else rolls in after. So rather than health. Yeah. So you find like whatever on their plate, they just remove the chicken and just keep the same stuff mm-hmm. and not replace it with anything. I know some vegans who would still eat the food with a, if it's been cooked with like a chicken gravy or something and have the chicken removed and just use the gravy or the sauce itself and be like, yeah, I'm vegan. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because there is definitely a big movement and they try and persuade others to also become vegan, right? Mm. Which is interesting because for health reasons, and we can get into this as well, because I mean, I guess different things work for different people. Whereas the veganism is more like, you're right, to save animals, the planet, cruelty, yeah. all those kind of things. But the thing is right now is, I wouldn't like to say it's a fad because a lot of people are noticing major differences depending on how, how well they adapt or transition their- To what, to vegan, to vegan- To a vegan, vegan diet. Right. So there's a lot of people that are, are saying that they're vegans because it's well recognized. It's a, it's, a, it's a label that's well recognized. If I went to a restaurant in Brazil and I said I'm plant based, then they're going to ask me questions. If I say that. vegano, then they're going to say, oh, you're vegan. Okay. And then we'll be able to, they'll be able to point me in the right direction. Oh, okay. Fine. Why not just vegetarian? Vegetarian is the original way. You know, but when you say vegetarian, are you talking about lactose vegetarian or lacto over vegetarian? No idea. See, vegetarian <laughs> is the original way of saying we eat vegetation. Right. Okay. Whereas now it's been, it's been kind of manipulated so it, it reaches more people. So people say that they're vegetarian, but now they're consuming dairy and they say they're vegetarian, but they're consuming eggs. So the real version Originally, of vegetarian no. is plant-based. I.e. no eggs. No eggs, no dairy. Interesting. But then the name plant-based is really only recent, right? It is quite recent, but what has been around for a very long time in the Rastafarian, shall I say religion, is ITAL. And What's that? ITAL. What, what is that? I-T-A-L. Right. That means you're eating live living foods. And that's something that Jamaicans have been doing for a very, very long Eating very live long time. living foods? Yeah. Which includes meat? No. So we're just talking about live plant foods. So okay. it means that you're not consuming anything that's dead and it still contains this electrical content. Ah, oh, interesting. So Bob Marley, all other Rastafarians, if they're religious, yeah. they will only be vegan or plant-based. They'll be on a plant-based diet, plant-based which is ITOL. ITOL. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yeah. But is, is that how you kind of got into it? Do you know, not really. I, I slid into it through, there was a few people that were really close to me that has already started going through their transition. And I watched them going through the transition. And that wasn't what sparked me to try it because I felt like when they was doing it or going through their transition, they looked like they were struggling to me. And I was just like, if you don't like the food, how it tastes, why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah. You know? And for myself, as a personal trainer, I would always advise people on how to eat to aid them on their goals which they're trying to achieve. But before I try and give them any advice on any dietary changes, I must try it myself so that I can give them proper advice. And I feel that there's a lot of trainers out there or there's a lot of professionals out there who don't practice what they preach. So I was putting my words into action and then advising afterwards. Okay. That's how I ended up going from eating five meals a day, which are predominantly meat-based meals apart from my breakfast. Right. Training super hard, thinking protein, protein, protein. Yeah. And then sliding slowly into a vegetarian diet or lacto over vegetarian diet into a complete. What do you mean lacto over? Lacto just means dairy okay. and over means eggs. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you moved from meat to lacto and eggs. Yeah. And, ve and vegetables yeah, and exactly. stuff like that. So let's go from like for the minute. <laughs> so you were like all into meat. Yeah. And fully. fish and a, like a, a true omnivore, right? Yeah, yeah. And training hard and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then how long did it take you to transition from like leaving the steak at home? Kind of um, I would say it probably took me about seven months. Seven months to transition yeah. fully to no meat products. Exactly. And the last thing I transitioned away from was eggs. Okay. That was the last how thing I, I, because I used to use it as like a snack. Yeah. yeah and yeah, I used to just have snack. boiled eggs. It's a good snack. Yeah. And I just used to take it and then be like, okay, well, I'm going to run off with this and then I'll leave the house and that's what I would have. And I just remember eating my last egg and I was just like, this is like a chicken fetus. <laughs> No. And that was it. I put myself off immediately. And Crazy. Then, I love eggs. I used to. Did you feel any, um, so for that seven months, obviously you, you kept up the training? Yeah. Yeah. And did you see any, any difference in your energy levels over that time? Like were there, were there times where you were like, it took your body time to adjust mm -hmm. or could you train as hard? Like how did that? Actually, I found it very easy. Um, my body adapted to it very well. I think one of the main reasons why my body adapted to it so well is because whilst I was consuming the, my old diet, it was preventing me from sleeping well. Well, your old diet? Yeah, so I could never fall asleep before 12 a.m. I was always sleeping after 12 or 1 a.m. Is this pre-babies or? Uh... No, yeah, definitely <laughs> pre-babies. <laughs> and I remembered one day, seven days in, when I was like completely off. I fell asleep at 9.17. It's because I didn't respond to my last WhatsApp message. <laughs> and I jumped out of bed at one o'clock in the mornings because I'm used to only getting three and a half, four hours sleep. Jumping out of bed, being like, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, getting ready. And then by the time I grabbed my phone to leave the house, I checked and it was only 1.45 or something along that, those lines. And I was like, now what do I do? <laughs> and ever since then, I've always, my circadian rhythm yeah. has been back in sync. So what do you do now? Seven hours, eight hours or something? I'll probably get about seven, eight and hours. And why, why what, what was it that you were eating, do you think, that was like causing you that? Was it like what or the combinations? Or? I think it was a mixture of what I was eating and the time that I was eating. I would, I would eat quite late, which would be roughly between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. And of course, my last meal would be quite heavy because I'll be thinking I need protein, right? So it'd be rice and chicken and whatever else on the side. Whereas now I know that it actually blocks the action of tryptophan, which allows your body to go into a deep sleep. So we have like a suprachiasmatic nucleus, which also um, aids in your circadian rhythm and the conversion of your hormones, that wasn't happening anymore, which can be blocked by meat consumption, caffeine, and alcohol. So if you have any of those too late, yeah, you struggle to sleep. So exactly. if you have them earlier, probably if you had, sure if, if anybody's yeah. having problems with their sleep, then I would advise that they should have finished having their dinner before 7 p.m. Okay, fine. Even if they're eating meat and stuff, they mm -hmm. can still, yeah. Interesting. So then why did you, change the time as well as what you were eating was that just coincidence in what sense so you dropped the meat and then yeah. you started sleeping better mm -hmm. were you still eating late or had you i don't do you, i started eating earlier because i started getting tired really early oh, right. so That's even true. to this day 
9 p.m. comes, my friends start laughing at me because my eyes start to shut. <laughs> or my left eye starts to shut and leaves my right eye open. <laughs> so I have this super lazy eye. And everyone's like, yep, yeah, Coops, he's gone bed. You're done. So you're, you're, you're over. <laughs> no one needs to check the time when they look at my face at 9 p.m. So still to this day, five years ago, That's five years, 9 right? p.m. is my hours where I'm, my, my brain starts to shut down. And how do you find your performance? Incredible. Gym and... Yeah energy and that's what I was about to say to, to go back to your answer yeah I didn't notice that I didn't have noticed anything negative in my performance whilst training because I was sleeping so much better yeah sleep, sleeping is like the cornerstone yeah so you had more energy from the sleep way more energy yeah. and to be honest I remember going through my transition I started do, doing green juices because I didn't like fruits or vegetables is that in the morning you do it? I would yeah and I would go to a shop called Fresco and I'd get a whole litre of green juice and I remember the first time I actually had my green juice I thought to myself that's the most greens I've ever consumed <laughs> in half an hour that I've done in a whole year crazy what's in this like cucumber kiwi like Cucumber, kiwi, um, kale, a little bit of spinach, it's whatever just they was throwing. Like I was just like, give me that one that I really one. don't like. And that's how my body started adapting to it. It's like, okay, I can do this. I can and do this. And you had that in the mornings? I used to have it every morning. So what's your what's your diet now then? Yeah. Like you're kind of okay. you're still doing five meals? And no, probably. So today it's already quarter to four. I haven't eaten anything yet. Nothing today? I haven't had anything since last night at 6 p.m. And what did you have at 6? 6 p.m. I had prunes, a little bit of mulberries and some raisins. That was it. That's it? That's it. That's all I've had. And that, is that all you had yesterday? That's all I had yesterday. I had, if I count the pack, I think in a the pack there was about 36 prunes and I had three quarters of them. Right. How come? Why prunes? Because wanting to give myself a nice like a little cleanse, and... cleanse yeah, like yeah. a soft cleanse, not yeah. nothing too deep. Right, and I just thought, oh, I you know, I just have some prunes. Fine, and that was it. Is that is that a normal uh, a normal routine for you? So the day before that, I had so I prepared myself a sea moss shake. A which shake? Sea moss, which is awesome. like a sea um, plant, like okay, sea right. vegetables, like oh, a right. seaweed. Right, right. I made a sea moss shake with coconut water, coconut flesh, a um, couple of dates, and that was roughly around two p.m. Prior to that, I had only water and herbal tea. And then I had a papaya smoothie, and that was it. Coffee? No coffee. Never drink coffee? Never caffeine. Oh man, life's better with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I need a pick-me-up if I need No, one. that's fair enough. Yeah, and I have, I have my results. I know, I know what to use to, to, to give me that lift. Fair enough. So, so you can start that. And then, so then today is just like a fast day for you? It's not a fast, it's, it's just a day. normal day? It's just a normal day. Okay, interesting. So you don't often have, you never have breakfast? Nope. Never breakfast. Well, my breakfast would be the first meal of my day. The breakfast is just a br break fast. Break yeah, fast, yeah. right? So whenever I eat my first meal, it's going to be breakfast, right? So is that normally <coughs> at what time? Normally, it would be roughly around two, between two and four. Normally? Yeah. Okay. And so on average, are you doing one meal a day? Yeah, I would say. As long as when my wife's not around, yes. <laughs> Typically, <laughs> I eat to comfort her and eat together as a unit. Like a, a communal thing? Yeah. Well, whereas if I, right now she's in Florida and I'm home alone, right. I don't eat that much. Fair enough. And nice. muscle mass loss, none. None? None at all. So you kind of similar weight to you were five years ago, let's exactly. say, when you were Crazy. Yeah, so I feel like once your body adapts, so just why diets don't really work for a lot of people, it's because... And you're, you're talking about diets being eyes in to lose weight or yeah, to... Yeah, exactly. If you don't change one's lifestyle, then and doing a diet which is technically doing something temporary your weight's always going to come back it's because your body gets used to how much energy is being taken in and how much it has to expel and it's it brings itself and to match the new calorie intake therefore once it matches the calorie intake and then you go back to your old eating habits you gain weight yeah and that's yeah. that's that's, that's exactly how diets always turn out 100 percent 100%. So my body has slowly adapted to how much energy that I put in and how much I'm expelling and it's just kept me You're expelling this similar amount, right? Mm -hmm. Training the same, mm -hmm. building the same up, but you're taking less calories in now. Way less calories and very little protein. And very little protein. Very little protein. If I just had sit for the past two days, I've had, I've had a papaya smoothie and some prunes with some mul dried mulberries and some raisins. <laughs> 
So that's mostly sugar and carbs, right? In fruit, I mean. No, fructose. It's not say fructose, sugar. Fructose, yeah. fructose, sorry, sugar's a bad word. Fructose, naturally occurring sugar. Oh, right then. There we go. Um, and then carbohydrates is in that as well. Well, that is carbohydrates. The natural okay, carbohydrates okay, fine. is fructose. fructose. Fine. And, and, and so is that most, is that like the, the staple of your diet then? Yeah. I mainly consume fruit. It's probably like 70%, 80% on times my diet. Fruit? Yeah. And then when you're pushing the boat out, uh, do you do eat like, you don't eat like, do you any like kind of rice or? Every so often, like if I eat out, I feel like my cheat, when people say, what, should, what do you do on your cheat day? I don't have a cheat day, but if it were, if I were to say I have a cheat day, it would be when I eat out of my house because it goes against all of my, it goes against my morals and what I feel like is good for me. Yeah, yeah. So if I still go to a restaurant, I know they're going to lace it with a load of oil. I don't cook with oil when I'm at home. No oil. We don't use oil. It's very specific when we use oil in the house. Right. Uh, to be honest, if you have a question, why do we use oil to cook? Oil okay. doesn't mix with anything. It literally sits on the top of everything. Yeah. So if you're making a sauce, a soup, whatever it is, it will never mix with it. So it slows down digestion. It's what causes some people to have some gas. That's your cheat. Never chocolates. Nothing like oh, that. There's bougie bougie chocolates. That's the best vegan chocolate. Which one? Bougie bougie. Bougie bougie. bougie. Yeah. I've not heard of it. I mean. That's- but I've never been a sweet tooth person. Right. In okay. the sense where when my brothers were, when we used to get pocket money, I used to get two pounds. I used to spend 20 pence on penny sweets for my brothers and I used to share that to them and I used to save my money. So mm. I think by the time I was six or seven, I'd save my first 100 pounds. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, so you've never was, really been like, you've never really been into bad food. You've always been health conscious. No. Like I said, I was the only vegetables that I used to eat was broccoli. And I would have to smother it with a load of gravy <laughs> on top of the lamb that I was eating, right. right? And that was it. When it came to fruits, I never used to eat fruits, but I used to have it in concentrated juice. So like Fiverr Life, which my friends are laughing oh, yeah, at. Yeah. And like strawberry Ribena. That's me getting my fruit intake. And I did a complete 180. Crazy. And so what exercise do you do? I'm, I train calisthenics, so it's all okay. body weight training. Right. Um, I tried working out in the gym and it doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, I like training outdoors. Yeah. And if you were to build my Instagram, you would see the ma- the place that I what's train. Your, uh, what's your Instagram? Uh? My Instagram account is actually at coop underscore DC. Okay, cool. C-O-U-P-E yeah. underscore DC. We'll whack it on the uh, show notes. People That'd can be great. Check it out and stuff. So yeah, I actually me and a a friend of mine was able to build an outdoor gym in Westbourne Grove. Amazing. No, Westbourne Green um, Space, which is just by the High Road. Okay, yeah. So West West London. Yeah, yeah. And I use that place as my office. Amazing. So yeah, all body weight training. So you have clients there, pull-ups, muscle-ups, levers, all that kind of stuff. You know it. Yeah. Yeah, I I love that you know it. (laughs) (laughs) Trying, I can do muscle-ups. Nice. What type of muscle up? Is it like the CrossFit muscle up? Or is it the, the, the calisthenics so, strict form muscle up? So I can do uh, I can do a strict ring muscle up on Good. the rings. Yeah. On the rings. Like one at a time. Okay. Right, okay. one at a time. Yeah. I can't bosh like loads out. Okay. Um, That's still good. It's good, it's good. I can do um I do, do CrossFit, but I, I learnt the strict muscle up somewhere else. There was a guy running a course for like yeah. half a day, so I learnt to do it properly. And some hand and handstands and stuff. Then I I can do some kipping CrossFit style yeah. muscle ups on the rings. And then on the bar, I can currently, because I haven't learned it, I can only do um, like kipping bar muscle ups. I think just for the fact that you could do ring muscle ups without kipping, you can also do a uh, false grip muscle up on the bar. So you yeah, fold you really your get... hand over the bar and you just all strength. And just straight up. Straight up. No swing, no nothing. So you just have to kind of get to your chest and then you can you're over throw your head That's forward it. a bit and yeah i've just got to try it i love it but i do i do crossfit a lot of crossfit yeah so which is which i really like mm-hmm. i really like it um i've got a good friend of mine ben who just does the calisthenics as well yeah like a lot of rings levers i mean he's great at those i mean i don't do levers ever really i mean for core strength calisthenics is the way it's 100 percent. oh 100 i wish i did gymnastics when i was young same here did you do it? You? No, I wish I did. I wish I'd done it. I mean, my dad said that he tried to, but then when the teacher asked him why we wanted to do, uh, go to gymnastics, he gave his answer and said, I really like such and such to do gymnastics. And I think from Des, because he told me this not too long ago, he said, the way that the coach looked at him, he thought we was going for his sake and not for our own sake. 
Oh, I and see. you know there's always the largest waiting list to start up um, gymnastics. So yeah, yeah. I guess that's the reason why we didn't bother doing it. So what did you do when you were younger? Taekwondo, snakeboarding and skateboarding, uh, a little bit of boxing. And I think that's as far as it went. It? After yeah. that, I started traveling. Are you doing any martial arts at the moment? No, I'm not. I actually did I did a few classes of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I really want to start that this year. And um, when I went away, I, since I've come back, I haven't gone forward. I think that's something I'm going to take on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd love that. I really want to get onto that. It's just like organising my time. Exactly. I'm doing like the CrossFit, I do a little bit of yoga, mm -hmm. day a week of football. Yeah. If I'm not doing CrossFit and stuff. Don't injure yourself. Everyone. Do you know, I only ever get injured playing football. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's it. <laughs> I can get injured Everyone. Football. Nothing else. <laughs> like, nothing else. It's really weird. I mean, you know, you get injured exercising, so... Yeah, but it's Maybe so that. minor in comparison. Oh, literally, I've never... I did a half marathon trail run on Sunday. Sick. Which is cool. Doing a lot of stuff. Never get injured. Only cross, only um, <laughs> football. Five or so football. I turn my ankle. Or like, you know, go for a challenge. Yeah. And, it's always the same. It's the same story all the time. But it's still good to move because most people are still on the couch. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm married. I haven't got time. I'm working hard. I haven't got time. I've got kids. I haven't got time. Can't always hear the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's easy just to whack it in the diary like it's the most important meeting of your day. Yeah. And then you just, you run it. You don't miss it. Yeah, do it. Also for, for mental clarity as well. 100%. Yeah. It's good to decompress and like just download. If you go for a run or gym or whatever it might be. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite liking the group, the group exercises are good. Yeah. Because then you're like, you're with others and it motivates you to like... I think that's, that's, that's been a big it. thing. In regards of even calisthenics, when people are out, outdoors training this ego is left behind once they walk through those gates and it's, it's your training like a family like if you're there's something that you can't do someone will be there to give you pointers and there's no mirrors uh, yeah, that's a great there's thing no mirrors. also CrossFit no mirrors do I sometimes go to the you know, there's an outdoor gym in Primrose Hill yes and and there's a lot of calisthetic guys that come yeah just unbelievable like just it's stuff inspiring, that they can do. Though, right? It's amazing, yeah. You, I could just you just sit there watching the guys. Yeah. Just like easy flag flagpole things, which probably I'm sure you could do all of that stuff. <laughs> you know, like swinging around. Can you do all the tricks? And yeah. Not all the tricks. I could do a few of the tricks. It's nice. really turned into a sport now. It's called freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is not too dissimilar to parkour, right? Or mm, is there still a I little? I feel like there's still a big separation between right, parkour okay, right, and. Right. and and freestyle because freestyle you're still on the board on the bar okay so parkour, the bar. you're jumping all over head yeah you're doing everything yeah yeah nice well yeah i leave that for the youngers i stick to my statics no mate <laughs> so, but it's good i need to get i need to get on that because it's funny because you, you feel like you should be able to pull yourself up on a bar right until you just try and a lot of people are like can't even do a pull up I feel like an easy that's an eye opener especially yeah. for yeah. gym goers yeah i train a lot of people that started off in the gym they're like, yeah, but Coop, I just need to go to the gym and get ready so that I can come train. Like, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you can only get ready by training with me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then I feel like lifting weights, I feel like master your body weight, then take on weights. I feel like that's yeah, the way forward. That, absolutely. You know, can you pick yourself up? Terrible tragedy happened in West London with Grenfell Tower. And I hate to use this as an example, but there was people trying to abseil down a building and they were falling with their children. And that's a bad scene. And a lot of people had gone, I could see it from my balcony. And you could see Grenfell from yeah. your balcony? And right. a lot of people had gone there to be right by it and heard to the help screams out and, and it's exactly would try to do something, I don't know. Um, and for myself, it wasn't something I wanted to see. It looked like a, it, was, it, it was a serious matter. And there was a lot of helicopters surrounding, no one was dropping any water in the building. There was just a lot of filming, and I just don't understand why you'd need to get such footage from so close of people falling to their death and not help. No, you know? I, yeah, I mean, and um, I was thinking about it, and I was just like, the people that was falling, I was just like, if only you was able to hold your own body weight, never mind to tumble with your children. Yeah. There was like tying their bed sheets together, their curtains together, and then trying to abseil down from their building. Oh, man, it's so sad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, yeah, I mean, so on the on the exercise, it's just being able to do normal stuff, right? Like picking stuff up, or God forbid you have to 
hang off a cliff yeah or whatever window watching Jackie yes. Chan movies or watching any yeah. movie, action movie where you see them jump from one building to another and you'd be like yeah I'll do that <laughs> no you wouldn't <laughs> you would not be able to pick yourself up you just got to hold I mean it's actually I don't know if everyone, if anyone tries just holding on even just holding on to a bar and see how many minutes you can hold on to that bar for minutes you, you mentioned minutes have you done that uh, so max I could probably do a minute and a half probably that means you haven't done it no we did it a while ago yeah I could, I could, if you pushed me, I could do more than a minute. I think it's Muscle Beach in LA where they have this competition. If you can hold a bar for two minutes, you get either a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. But the bar spins. And spins. Yeah. So there's, you can't adjust your grip. If you try and adjust your grip, the whole bar moves with it. Weakens oh, your right. forearms. When your forearms fatigue, your hand grip goes. But two minutes is the the challenge. And I was there, and I forgot all about it. Because oh, I can hold that. a bar. Done that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think I can do it, but I've only ever gripped on a static bar. I haven't ever grabbed onto a spinning oh. bar. Right, right, So right. I know that's the reason why most people can't do it. But I'm, when I'm next there, I'm going for that challenge. Do you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, next time I'm in the gym, I'm going to, I'm going to see how long I can hold Go that for bar. it. Go for it. I'm going to hold it. So, so going back to like the fasting. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Obviously, everyone's different, right? Right. I mean, I'm doing. I've been doing. Um, I mean, I love meat. Mm-hmm. I'm, my my thing is like I quite like. I could tell by the smile in your face when you say. I it. love meat. Yeah. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I don't eat that much meat. Yeah. And then most I'm eating like vegetables, fish, meat, like a mixture of things. Mm-hmm. Try and try and eat stuff that's like grown in the ground or that's been living. Mm. <laughs> um, and then I've been doing a bit of intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. I maybe finish eating at seven, and then I'll start eating again like. 12, 1, something like that. Nice. Sorry, it's like 16 hours or yeah. so. So that's been quite cool. How do you feel? Uh, I feel great. It's also nice to know that I don't, I mean, I don't feel like I need to eat three meals a day. Yeah. I don't have breakfast so much. It's some, my stomach probably has shrunk a little bit. And um, it's just nice to know, hey, if I'm traveling, I don't really need to go and eat something. Yeah. Or, you know, if there's only enough, enough food for one meal a day, that's cool. You know, it's quite nice to be able to just know, because humans have not been eating three meals a day until recently right very recent so it's nice to know if, if something goes down i'll be all right yeah <laughs> um but i feel i feel good because it's i feel like um burning fat producing ketones maybe giving me some more energy i don't have the down you know like the you go to most offices mm. at 3 p.m most people's eyes are rolling to the back of their heads and they've got this like little dip and they're searching for the chocolate and yeah stuff like that which is only going to cause them to crash again which will crash again <laughs> i mean not not saying that i don't eat chocolate in the office because yeah. i do like a little bit of chocolate but anyway that's my kind of, sort of my, my mostly my thing yeah but everyone's different yeah and the thing with these diets um not diets to lose weight but just like let's just say a normal diet mm-hmm. is most people don't even know where to start yeah do they need to go as let's say ex- as extreme as you've done with one meal a day or are there certain things that they could i think like, it boils start down to, to just i think it boils down to a person's goals what they're trying to achieve for me i just started for myself i feel like i just i i found a path yeah. and this path yeah. was just feeding me mentally with all this new information which goes totally against everything that was taught to me in my nutrition course, <laughs> everything that's taught to me in my personal training courses, and everything that's taught to us on just publicly in media, how three meals a day, etc. And the type of foods that I was choosing to eat, and that's that I was seeing a correlation of what we've been taught to what we are then teaching others, and keeping this cycle of people becoming sick. And I wanted to break away from that. And the more I learned, the deeper I, re- the more I realized I didn't know. Interesting. So where did you get to the fruit? Because most of your diet's fruit, you said. Yeah. How did you get to, like, how did you arrive at that being the thing that you preferred to eat or you chose to say? I think it was realizing that of all food sources, it was the one source of food which gave itself to you. It grew, it caught your vision. It caught your attention from its bright colours. Then the smell was more inviting. And then once you placed your hand on it, it would just fall off into your hand or would hit the deck. And I started realising, okay, and this food is still alive. So it still carried that electrical current. It still was providing energy for my body. And also fructose, which is a natural occurring sugars, is what our body thrives on for energy. You don't get energy from proteins. You get energy from the carbohydrates. And I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about starches because starch was the original name for carbohydrates and then it changed 
Oh, okay. So knowing that majority of my energy comes from fruit, and if I want energy, then why don't I consume more fruit? And you eat all fruits? Yeah. Whatever, grapes, strawberries, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Fine. And, and you I'm, just arrived at that? Yeah, exactly. But it was, all, it was all part of a transition. So if anybody said, well, because I'll never get to where you are now. And I'm like, well, I started from where you were, probably way behind you because of the foods that I wasn't even eating back then. Yeah. And then once I changed my diet, I started realizing how much other foods there were out there to explore. And even now I love exploring tropical fruits. It's because at the beginning it was, I was sticking to the fruits that was predominantly grown here in the UK. And then, then it was the rest of Europe. And then it was, what's growing in Africa? What's going in Ghana, where I'm from? What's going in Ooh, Ghana? We have to have a debate with Adiela. <laughs> Adiela is from Nigeria. Yes. Um, and she says the best jollof rice is, is from... <laughs> I think it's actually, isn't it something in Ghana day today or something? I mean, I mean um, Ghana anyway. does have jollof as well. <laughs> That's but, it, jollof. You know, <laughs> I think isn't there like some... Uh, there's, a little, there's a little beef going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Who makes the best and where? who made it first? And to be honest, I mean, it doesn't even make sense having that debate. It's because the ingredients of where, what what makes jollof isn't even African in the first place. Really? Yeah, I mean, you start with tomatoes. It's even okay. grown in, in Africa. That was <laughs> from Mexico. And, and all these other different fruits or vegetables that was been imported, even rice is imported. Yeah. It's not something that was utilized in Africa in the Originally, first place for yeah. anybody to, to say to what claim, claim it, yeah. I claim this. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. And with your kids, because you- One daughter. One daughter. What diet do you have her? She's on a fully whole food, plant-based diet. Whole food, plant-based. Yeah. So not just fruit. Fruit, she's everything that's whole foods. So nothing okay. processed. Fine, so veg vegetables, yeah. no eggs. No eggs. So no eggs, no fish, no, no meat. Dairy. No dairy. No dairy, fine. Yeah. And then it's just vegetables. It was breast milk for a whole year. Right. No water, just breast milk only, no food. Why no water? Didn't need any. Fair enough, that yeah. age, yeah. yeah. But now, obviously. Now yeah. she has her water yeah. Um, yeah. and she loves her coconut water. She's very sport, she doesn't even realize it. She loves expensive things. <laughs> Like coconut daddy. It's <laughs> coconut water. You gotta be careful which coconut water as well, because some coconut waters a little got other stuff going on inside. We we buy coconut water and coconuts. Oh, so you only from, you only drink the the, from the ones that we chop open ourselves. Okay, so you get the coconut from the local store or something. Yeah, and buy like the Thai coconuts. So we buy the big jelly jelly coconuts because she likes to eat the jelly on the inside. Oh, nice. So yeah, we don't we, we don't buy bottled or stored anything. Um, coconut water. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. And so, and so milk for a year and then as she started to eat solids yeah, or whatever. started exploring more. You started the meat and, and then, I'm sorry, the the meat. vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and then when she got to two, that's when we allowed her to eat all fruits and vegetables. So for instance, she wasn't eating nightshade foods. Which are? Potatoes, um, tomatoes, gorgia berries. Okay. Um, aubergines, peppers, that type okay. of stuff. That's because they can aid in inflammation in the body. Uh, okay. Because of the, the glycoalkaloids is the chemical which we were trying to avoid until we knew that her digestive tract was fully developed and was able to handle those things. Wow, she's a lucky girl. Yeah, so I mean, we just kept everything as natural as possible and just yeah. introduced her into food slowly and just watched her just explore, like slowly, why just bombard them with so much food? I feel like when it comes to children, we're we're so conscious about what it is that we do for ourselves, we want to do it for them too. So we, we build this plate with so many different foods on there, with so much different flavours to suit our taste buds. We're doing it for them, it's like, no, they can have everything plain for now. Let them enjoy the food for what it is. They don't need five different things in their plate. They can have two, maybe three max. And then we can figure out the things that she likes and dislikes. If there's any case of bloating, we will know what food source it was to pinpoint where the problem's coming from. So we slowed everything down so we knew what we was doing with her and her feelings. And because we know that food can aids in emotions and we were just being more conscious. Yeah, that's good, it's true, you are what you eat. Yeah. And so potatoes and stuff now? Sweet potatoes, we're still not big fans of potatoes in the first place. Why not? Same reason, I mean, we don't really eat potatoes, so oh, okay, right. we, we just, what's, what's in Is the house? Is there like a, a dietary reason for that or just? Um, 
for myself or for us, it's something that we just bypass. It's after a while, it's just like, we don't need potatoes. Like sweet potatoes, yeah, it's fine. Why Every so often. Are they better than normal potatoes? I would, I, I believe so. But it's not a big deal. How often we right. have sweet potatoes in the house? Very little. Again, that's something that we right. eat when we're outdoors. Okay, fine. Yeah. So when your wife's home, you're eating a little bit more, yeah. a bit more adventurous. Yeah. When she's out, uh, fruit and... And water or f- liquids. Yeah. I'm more on a liquid diet, if okay. anything. And when you're fasting, because mm-hmm. I know people trying to do fast, I don't know if they get it right or... So do you, you drink water with your fast yeah. or no water? I do both. It's called a wet fast. A wet fast or dry fast. Right. So a wet fast is when you do strictly water, um, no salt, no no addition to your fluid intake at all. It's strictly water, no sparkling water, no caffeine, no, no sparkling water. tea, no, no chewing gum, no cucumber, <laughs> nothing goes in your water, just the water itself. And then when I'm going dry, I don't drink it or eat anything. And how long would you do that for? Varies between two and four days. Two time. to four days? Yeah. So you would fast for two, two straight days? Or four days. Or four? Yeah. And, and both wet and dry or? No, that would be, so I typically start off in a water fast, then go into a dry fast. For, so water fast for one day, dry fast for two to three or four days, depending. Sometimes what happens when you're fasting, your body's just like, ah, oh, just keep going. And you just And I just going. carry on. And then I'll break my dry fast and go back into a water fast. Oh, okay, fine. And then I'll do water for a while, and then I start with my coconut water, and then I would slowly break my fast. So often I would do seven days as a standard. As a standard fast for me, seven days is what I do. Water, so only water? Yeah. For seven days. How yeah. often do you do that? I would probably do it quarterly. Okay. But it can range between seven and 14 days. Or what, uh, what the fast? water fasting, yeah. Oh, so you'd even do longer than seven? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's considered as a short fast for me. Seven days is a short fast? Short fast, yeah. Wow. And then you start going into a medium fast, which would be 14 to 21 days. And then a long or extended fast would be 28 days to 40 days. To, with no food? With no food, just water only. Wow, have you done that? I haven't done it. I've only done 17 days. I was touching on to my 18th day. And I broke fast because I had to travel. Because I have a, I'm supporting an orphanage in Ghana. And before I took the flight there, my wife was a little bit concerned. She was like, Coops, I know you have a structure and how you break fast. And just in case you're not able to do it, break fast now. Because I, what I need you to do is come back healthy and strong. Because <laughs> well, yeah. we need to, we're about to have this baby. Fair enough. And that was the situation. That's so I broke enough. fast, flew, flew to Ghana, did what I needed to do there, came back home. How do you feel? Like, first, you ask, why, why are you fasting? I first started water fasting for my mental state. I wanted to know I was mentally as strong as I was physically. And I thought, what can I do to test that strength? And I thought, okay, well, what are we addicted to? What do we love the most? Is it television? Is it social media? Is it food? Hmm. Okay, so there's a book that I read or I've read many times from Marcus Aurelius, um, the emperor, um, called Meditations. And one of the things that he says in it is that one can conquer a town or village or country, but could you conquer your mind? And most people can't. They're constantly in battle with themselves. And because they're in battle with themselves, they practice escapism, whether that be speaking to other people, meeting up with friends, drinking, any other type of substance to, to take their selves away from their self. And I thought, yeah, this one I'm gonna go for. So for my very first fast, I did 11 days. Uh, water or no? Mm-hmm. Just water. With water, yeah. And I had no, advice had no I had, there wasn't any information out there about water fasting at the time so i did 11 days and i thought and this is really this is for your mind not your body this is for my mind, for your mind. Yeah. yeah but what i noticed on my fifth day was an incredible amount of strength really and were you training throughout this fast yeah i was working i was doing you were my working. shift i was doing my so normal work normal work training. do you train as well i do yeah. train with all my clients Okay, so your training is, 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 is with your clients, fine. Yeah. And you were doing the same? Same things I would normally do for them. Yeah. But for them, that type of training, for a lot of them, is like less than maintenance trainings because, um, of course, I'm way more advanced yeah. than a lot of the people that I train. But then there's others who can keep up. And there, <laughs> I would train really hard. And you keep up? Yeah. Well, I'm, they're, they're still keeping up with me. 
They came over to you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Um, you didn't notice a drop in energy. Energy, endurance. You know to drop in endurance. Endurance. Yeah, there so must have been something. Of course, yeah. I can't keep up. Do you? If I'm used to doing sixty you know, reps no, in one nothing go, in your, yeah. then I'm not going to do sixty reps in one go. Are you doing sixty pull ups in the in one go? No, um, dips. So, dips. Yeah. yeah. So I would listen to my body because what would happen is that you would you, you'll burn out, and you're during a water fast, it will put you on your ass, simply because what it needs to do is re-energize itself. So what would typically happen if you overdo it, you'll become lightheaded and faint. Okay, if you're training while fasting. If you overdo it. Yeah. There's a, that's why I always say to people when they're fasting, if it, when it comes to exercise and whilst fasting, I would say always leave your routine at home. Go to the gym, go to the park, however you're gonna train without a strict gym routine. Okay. So because if you go there with a routine in your head, then you're not you're gonna you're not gonna listen to what your body's telling you, which is probably rest, slow down, don't do that last set because your mind is so focused on completing your routine. Yeah, I see, I see, amazing. And did you see any physical benefits? So apart from the mind, and mm-hmm. it's, I agree, like I love doing hard stuff. Yeah, it's good for the mind. Is there any physical benefits from doing like even like what I'm doing, sixteen hour fasts, or is there nothing proven and? I think, all right, so if I start with my benefits first, what I found, I used to have an issue with my left foot. I used to have a corner, I used to grow at the bottom of my left foot, I had to get removed every five weeks, I would say. Ever since my very first fast has never returned. Um, keloids, I have quite a few scars on my body. All of them, I think I have roughly around 15 or 17 small scars here and there on my body, so all of them, apart from two, have gone completely flat. Really? Mm-hmm. Since fasting? Since fasting, yeah. Wow. I think those are the, the most... I wonder why? Oh, it's because whilst you're going through a water fast, your body is actually utilizing and eating away any waste that's in the body. So um, scar tissues, it would eat that away and it would quickly smoothen out what would, which black people in general do have or suffer from keloids whenever they have a type of cut on their body it won't heal smoothly whereas mine weren't either but then when i started fasting they all went smooth interesting so yeah your they've body, never come back no they haven't come back at all how long did it take for them to get for them to go uh do you know what at first i wasn't paying attention to them just that my foot i didn't realize until i tried to speak about it and i was like hold on let's go yeah i haven't gone back to have it removed for the past six months <laughs> So yeah, that's what fast does. So when you're water fasting, your body's now dumping waste from yep. the system and it's just going through a cleansing process. And then you'll, I guess if you've got excess fat, excess that fat, strips down. Exactly, but when it strips down the excess fat, it's also, it's also dumping the toxins that is bound within the excess fat stores. And that's why a lot of people on day three start to struggle. And I never advised anybody that water fast with me to do a fast for three days. So you always just one or two? You either do one or two days or you do five days. So why are they struggling when the toxins and, and everything It's because out? it takes about three days for the body to really kick into ketosis. And then what happens during that time is your body starts to break down all of the fat stores and pull toxins out from the tissues and dump them into your, into your system for, your, for it to be eliminated. So then your brain it almost feels similar to having a cold and a flu at the same time. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, they often say if you're going trying to get into ketosis, they get this like keto flu thing. Then. Yeah, so what's actually happening is normally you're, when you have a virus, your body temperature heats up. And that's because most viruses can't stand or withstand a certain temperature within the body. So your body knows how to, how to heal itself. So your temperature will rise and then it'll cause your, your, your pores and your skin to open up and allow fluids to now, or allow you to sweat to keep the outside of your body cool whilst it dumps and gets rid of this virus right. and all the viruses that may be in your body. So this is, that's one aspect of it. Then you have the removal of mucus from your respiratory system, mainly from your nasal, mainly from your lungs, from your throat, and bile acids, which you may need to vomit. And then you have your sweat pores, which it starts to dump the, the toxic matter from your, from, your, from your pores, from your skin. So yeah, that's what your body's going through and it typically happens for a lot of people between the 60th hour and the 90th hour. But for a lot of women, 
it can happen between a 48 hour onwards right so and how long does that last for it can last anywhere between some people 12 hours depending on how healthy they are before they enter into a fast but then it could also last 36 hours and so you've got to just grind through you that ride it out yeah. and i say to everybody embrace the symptoms that you're going through it's because it means that your body is dumping the waste and eliminating from your system and once it's gone it's gone so embrace yeah. everything so never look at it as a negative if you look at it as negative like your headache or your your sweating your higher temperature then the whole experience is going to be bad is there any benefit for doing it for shorter yes so like 16 like i've been doing or can rest or just to let your stomach give your stomach a break and not only your stomach the moment you consume food every part of your organs has to be active from your brain secretion of um, digestive enzymes your liver your kidneys your colon your everything has to be active just because you started chewing and it starts from the smell of food then to chew your food and then as soon as you swallow cascade of, 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 of like mechanics working yeah. and everybody talks about sleeping or sleep being so important for you and how how much is, is necessary but no one's talking about how necessary it is to rest your organs so definitely doing 16 hours to 24 hours to 36 hours is key okay and then how often so i would i used to do 36 hours 36 to 42 hour water fast every single week i did that for a solid year including seven day water fast and 10 day water fast and 14 day wow. water fast every um, quarterly and within the past three years i have gone 347 days without eating no joke mm. For people that don't want to quite go so many days without food. <laughs> so is it quite useful just to... Because, you know, like most people don't have a great diet. Yeah. You know, so even if they stop eating processed food and processed carbohydrates and all that stuff, they're going to get a bit more healthy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but is it useful for them even just to do like a day a week? Definitely. Two days I a week of just... 100% I would advise that. Like finish eating breakfast, like have dinner, don't eat breakfast, eat again at lunchtime. Is there some good benefit or, or for... even just have an early dinner... Go to sleep yeah. on an empty stomach. Notice the difference in how well you sleep. Then the next day, have dinner. Or oh, miss, miss breakfast just and miss lunch. Miss breakfast and lunch. Just do 24 hours. With water? You, with water. No coffee. No coffee? No coffee. It's because coffee is still interfering with your hormones. So just ride out with water. Hot water if you want to. But just give your body a rest. Give your organs a rest. And you'll notice a huge difference. Yeah. I need to do that, man. Have you never done a 24-hour fast? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, I do, I do 20, I'm Jewish, and once a year, mm -hmm. we do a 25-hour fast. Okay. So, and this says no water, no food. Cool. So I do that dry once fast. a year. Yeah. A dry fast once a year, which is great. I feel mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. And then during the year, I'm just doing like, like as I said, the 16-hour fast. Okay. So water... If I'm really honest, I've been having black coffee. Yeah. But mm -hmm. after speaking to you, I'm going to have to cut that out. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so I do that maybe five days a week. Yeah. Uh, I've, uh, my thing is what I say to people is if you feel like coffee, it should be something that you choose to do. A lot of, when it comes to the point where you feel like you need it. If we, you feel, we drink a lot of coffee. If you feel like you coffee. need it, it's probably because you have adrenal burnout. Right. And that means that... You, so that your body is not able to to provide you the same amount of hormones, which is going to keep your body stimulated. But also, the but the other thing is, like when you're in an office environment, it's not even it's not even the drug that you're craving, yeah. although most addicted to it. Mm -hmm. It's just the thing of like getting up from your desk, going to the you know going it's and the making whole coffee. It's the, it's the whole nice thing of like you know going to make a cup of coffee because it's nice to get up. You're only sitting down all day. Yeah. So, I mean, we have standing desks so you can move up and down, but it's still, it's good to move. Yeah. And you get into this thing of going and making a little coffee. Mm -hmm. We've got nice Same fresh coffee things, and like French press. Building a, a roll up. Get, yeah. Put your RZA down. Yeah. Roll your tobacco out. Absolutely. Roll it. Go outside, smoke it, <laughs> feel good, come back in. It's just that habit, isn't it, of, of like something. So, yeah, for a lot of people, it's, it's hard, me included, probably. I mean, it's... Uh, it's hard not to have a coffee. And yeah. often I'll even have a coffee and don't really need a coffee. Mm. 
It's just it's habit now. I just want to get up and have a little walk and yeah, make a little coffee. I probably wait half the time I didn't even finish the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sitting there, got cold and like. Um, but it's interesting. Last last thing before we wrap up, um, carnival diets. Mm-hmm. So there's quite a few people. Uh, I've been listening to a bunch of podcasts on people uh, doing carnival diets, mm-hmm. which seem to also work well for people. Have you looked into? I mean, you haven't done it yourself, but have you looked into anything like that? I haven't looked into anything like that, but I do know what the the end results mainly lead to afterwards. Right. Um, so basically, you're saying that they just. Dist- Eat strict. So just really, strict. Me, yeah, I listened to a couple of, like, uh, I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast quite a bit, which is interesting. And okay. he had a uh, heart surgeon on a while ago. And actually, this guy, Joe, is also doing it a bit. And uh, and so I think the guy had some problems before um, this doctor, and he cut out, started cutting out foods, and then mm-hmm. ended up just getting to meat and um, super healthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had tested himself and stuff. And then this guy, Joe Rogan, really interesting. He's tried it for the last month. He said he's got a lot more aggressive mm-hmm. um, Makes sense. from eating meat. But again, feeling good. Um, so it's just interesting. There's like different things work, seem to work for different people. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I noticed when I changed my diet is that my aggression toned down a lot. I used to go from zero to one million <laughs> real quick. I right. wouldn't even notice it happened. Whereas now I'm with so much control of myself and I do believe that comes from eating animal flesh. I do believe that comes from the spirit in which you take, you embody when you consume animal products. You're not only does it have that physical effect, it also has a spiritual effect on you. Whereas I know, for instance, when a person has an organ transplant, 16% of those people that have an organ transplant commit suicide. The reason why they commit suicide is because the person that they got those organs from committed suicide. They didn't deal with their problems. That has now transcended to that person who's now taken on those organs. 32% of those people that have organ transplant or blood transfusions take up new habits that they never had before, which would be smoking and drinking. All of a sudden it's a brand new thing that they was never into before. Then you look at it from an animal's perspective and how we consume animal flesh and the lifestyle that they've lived and what they went through before they died. Anger, depression, fear, anxiety. These are very common in a lot of people on a day-to-day, living their life of day-to-day. Now, when you're consuming a lot of it, it does affect the way that you feel. And you'll notice when you come across a lot of people on a, on a plant-based diet or even vegans, they carry a type of energy that is quite uplifting. And that energy is felt quite strong. And a lot of people that's, that's trained with us when we run our classes, I've come to our classes and been like, well, I've never even considered- uh, all, of your, all of your guys, yeah. plant-based. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, we don't stand on top of tables- You're not preaching to people. Me. No, it's, but the energy, the vibe that we carry is just so, it's, it's so magnetic. It just draws people in. And you know, it's, it's, you look at, if you look in the world, you have people everyone wants to eat like a beast so if you want to eat like a beast you will become a beast and behave like one right so everyone wants to eat like a lion and wants to be a lone wolf stuff like this okay yeah and they move in packs or they move alone and then you have herbivores which move as a unit they move as a community you know and it's that family vibe that we all carried now yeah, you can eat like a beast, but these <laughs> beasts still consume these herbivores yeah. and they still eat the stomach of these herbivores because they pre-digested the, the grasses in which they've been consuming, yeah. which allows these beasts to now consume those to help flush their system or flush their, their digestive tract. And this is the reason why when lions and other carnivores are in a zoo, they end up with colon cancer because they're fed a lot of meat and they're not fed pre-digested grasses. Interesting. Well, you need a balance of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you, even you the lions, I mean, you're eating, it's nice to have a bit of a, a balance, but you, for, you, for you specifically, you feel just like more energetic, calmer, less aggressive. Stress, I handle my stress really easy. Don't bother, I don't deal with anxiety like I used to. And I just, that was just something that, and then my wife has the same, so she's the same. And then of course, yeah. we're going to raise our daughter the same way. But what, what, for her, it's about guidance. It's about being 
open and truthful about everything. And we do a lot of research into everything. We do, we use ourselves as case studies. I, I work with a lot of people um, and using, using their case study to, to just to reassure what it is that I'm feeling and what, and what it is that I've learned is actually the truth in which, in which I've, I've found. Yeah. And yeah, so we're just breaking the mold. And of course, who knows what may happen when she's older. She's like, oh, I want to try this. That's, that's all up to you, you know? But for me, I feel like once we remove the animal products from my house, it made a huge difference in the fact that we didn't need to use all of these bleaches and detergents on our on our kitchen surfaces anymore because we didn't have any raw flesh on them. Yeah, that's interesting. We that's didn't interesting. need to use deodorant like we used to because our body wasn't expelling all of this toxic waste of putrid, rotten flesh inside of our bodies. And the more that you treat your body like the Garden of Eden rather than a pet cemetery, the better <laughs> you smell. And then you realise all of these all of these cosmetic products are all designed to basically aid you in the lifestyle that you're already doing. Whereas if you eat bad, then of course you're gonna need these deodorants, these type of sprays, you need these type of body washes. Yeah, love it, I love <laughs> it. Mate, what a great place to end. How can people find you? You can find me on Instagram. I think yeah. that's the only, Instagram and YouTube. You've got a YouTube channel as well. YouTube channel's called yeah. Break Fresh. Break Fresh. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, um, and on Instagram, it is at Coop DC. Cool. At Coop underscore DC. Oh, Coop underscore DC. So that's C O U P E. Find us. And if all else fails, they can find you on the bars. Always find in me the in the park. Bars. Yeah. Rain or shine. That's exactly it. Amazing. Thank you very much for coming in. No, Great to see you. Welcome. Speak. Awesome. <laughs> hey, folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.